project called The Listening Machine, which is a three-way partnership between myself, Daniel Jones, Peter Gregson here, and the Britain Symphonia, who are a fantastic modern chamber um, ensemble. And in brief, um, this is a piece which runs online for a six-month period, which translates the dynamics of Twitter, the social network, into a piece of continuous music, which is going to be running constantly over that time. So, before we talk about the piece much more, I'm going to give you a very quick excerpt um, of it, and then I'll tell you exactly what it's about, and we'll discuss the compositional process, and then we'll kind of go back and have another listen to the piece, a kind of ABA, if you see what I mean. So. <laughs> So um, that was an excerpt of The Listening Machine. Very briefly, the team behind the project is myself. I'm a computer scientist uh, with an interest in systems and processes that we can use to generate music and structure sounds in time in ways that we wouldn't ordinarily do when we write a piece of music manually. So using computers and technology and take inspiration from the natural world. Um, Peter Gregson here, who uh, will be talking briefly in a second about the compositional process, is a fantastic cellist and also um, an avid uh, fan of technology and the interface between that and music. And um, Britain are the ensemble that we've been working with to record a lot of the components which are made up this piece. So the final bit of background that you need is that the listening machine was commissioned by a new BBC Arts Council initiative called The Space. Uh, which is an on-demand digital channel which is trying to move um, traditional broadcasting into the online realm, so creating kind of interactive content, um, bringing Arts Council regularly funded organisation or national portfolio, whatever they're called, um, kicking and screaming into the internet and trying to get them to do some interesting things basically. Um, so our thought when um, we started discussing this project um, was that we didn't want to put something which already existed and make it digital, but we wanted to create something which was quintessentially digital. So what could be more digital than the social graph? Um, this embedded community of people and chat that we're all a part of. Um, we wanted to um, start using this. In fact, uh, it was Peter who was having a conversation with a data scientist friend of his who realised that actually a lot of the language that people use when they discuss uh, music and when they discuss data science and the flow of information are kind of similar. So you're talking about um, volumes and you're talking about tempi and dynamics and the two apply to each of these things. Conversation has a rate and a flow as does music. So we started saying okay um, how could we translate um, these dynamics into musical dynamics. The first problem being there are um, hundreds of millions of Twitter users and it's a very, very difficult thing to kind of ascertain a mood or um, individual elements of this. So we decided to um, take a slightly different tack and take inspiration by what's called the mass observation movement, which was an early 30s British sociology project which aimed to study the population by getting them to report back. A couple of thousand volunteers would report back on their daily lives. So they would keep diaries, um, they would eavesdrop on each other and they would spy on each other and they would write about the kind of the, the, the quotidian details of their everyday lives. So one example here from May uh, 1938, 6.30 a.m. rose and got my husband's breakfast. He was going to the coronation. 7.30 a.m. went back to bed and dreamed that I saw a dagger under the king's pillow. Hmm. So move on 75 years and we have Tori and Sarah, or at Peace Love ST. I had a dream last night. I completely forgot about prom and it was six and I was still in my pajamas. Lol lol. Then I got hit by a bus and woke up. So there are certainly some parallels between the two, and we decided to kind of capitalise on these weirdnesses by taking this as a microcosm um, that we could sonify. Um, and the meaning of sonification is kind of simple. You're taking something which exists, translating it into music. Um, the simplest example is a wind harp. A more complex example on the right um, is a piece which uses Sudoku as a way to generate sound. Um, but clearly we're doing something a little bit more um, convoluted. And so we needed a convoluted system to do this. So 
very quickly, this is what makes up the project. At the top, we have a system of software which is continually and in real time listening to a secret set of 500 people across the UK. Um, 500 Twitter users from different parts of the population, from technology, culture, sport, education, health, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I stress this is in real time. As they say something, it will then be classified and fed into the system. Um, Beneath that, we then have a class set of classification processes which then take certain aspects of what they're saying, syntax and semantics, and um, even the rhythm and flow of the speech, and use that to trigger a whole archive of tiny, tiny little samples that we've got and translate that into a piece of music. Um, so the way that you can kind of get some insight into what is going on is that this is all on the web. And I believe at this point I'm supposed to show a website, which is this. So this is um, mm, this is a, a visualization panel which appears on our website, thelisteningmachine.org. And so at any point you can see um, in real time the different uh, properties of this population. So if they're tweeting more rapidly, this rate dial goes up. If they're in a happier mood, this sentiment triangle ratchets towards the plus sign. Um, and depending on the amount of activity in a particular area of the conversation or what people are talking about, um, this dial will then shoot up. So um, the, uh, in the immediate aftermath of, uh, of the Rebecca Wade uh, disaster, the politics dial ratcheted up to 10, and suddenly all of these parts of the score which correspond to politics started being triggered. With me? Ish? Yes. Sweet. Um, so, um, these are the dials, we'll skip over this, and let's listen to some music. So, um, the really key thing, the part of the score which is generating melodies every single second, is it is actually taking the rhythm and flow of people's speech um, and translating that into a score. So, say we have a sentence, so you probably can't read this uh, from the back, but this says, the pronunciation of a typical sentence expressed as music. Throw away the consonants, and what we've got is uh, or uh, e, a, o, or uh, e, e, or e, uh, e, uh. I never thought I'd be doing this on stage. Um, and then beneath that, it's translated into a series of numbers which correspond to notes of the musical scale. So what we then have is a score, which can be played by a musician. Um, I'll explain in a sec how that translation is done, but this then is the pronunciation of a typical sentence expressed as music. <laughs> um, but yeah, save it for the algorithms. Um, so, the, a little bit of detail, I, I know that um, time is getting on so we'll skip over a lot of the detail, but um, in brief, the vowel to ordering is done by mapping what's known as formants, which are the different frequencies present within the human voice. So on the far left we have an e, uh, e, which um, when you say uh, a vowel e, a, ah, or, there are several different, um, different kind of pitches of sound going on there. And what we have then done is mapped um, each of those set of three formants to different instruments in an orchestral ensemble and then ordered those based on the vowels. Um, that's all you're getting for now. Um, we then went through the English language looking for what the most common pronunciations of words were um, in British English, I should say, being a UK uh, based piece of music, and tried to create a whole load of sentences which um, contained as many of those vowel sounds as possible. Um, so this is what we ended up with, a whole load of nonsense sentences which we used to generate scores. Um, before we go into what we did with the scores, we would like to try something quickly which we've never tried before, um, which is to take some of these systems and use them to generate some music in real time, not with this sample group, but with the Twitter feed of the Music Tech Fest hashtag. So, um, yes, uh, caveat emptor, uh, etc. So, I'll try and bring this up so you can see what's going on. So what I'm now going to do is run a Python script which will search for historical tweets that match Music Tech Fest, um, extract the content of those tweets and then send 
all of those uh, speech rhythms to a system that will then generate patterns of music based on. Now this is all of the, the tweets from today, um, starting at 8am, so it starts off quite slow, um, but as the conversation rate starts to pick up, the piece also picks up. So you should hear from 8am until about late afternoon um, when the hacking came to a head. Six months. So the, the first thing that really struck me, given I 